Hi, thanks for joining us again. This video is part of the Navigating EC Cloud with Confidence video series, and it's a tutorial on how to set up AuthPort on EC Cloud for wireless client authentication. We also have a technical guide on AuthPort configuration that covers more or less the same material as this video, and you can find the link to this resource in the description below. Also in the description, you will find a link to a video that introduces what AuthPort is and how it works. So if you're interested in knowing more about AuthPort, please check this video out. Now let's begin. AuthPort can be set up in three steps. The first step is to enable AuthPort from the add-ons page. And you can either enable AuthPort at the cloud level or at the site level. We'll get to more details later. The second step is to add service plans and create accounts. Then the third step is to enable AuthPort in your SSID configuration. And since with AuthPort, wireless clients are authenticated through Captive Portal, a Captive Portal editor is available. A Captive Portal is included in AuthPort so that you can customize your own Captive Portal and multiple Captive Portals can be saved for use. Now we will show you how to configure AuthPort on EC Cloud. Now we're on EC Cloud. Remember the first step is to enable AuthPort and add-ons. And note that add-ons can be managed either at the cloud level or at the site level. So let's first go to the add-ons page at the cloud level and you'll find AuthPort here. So for AuthPort, you have the option to enable it for the entire cloud or just for specific sites. And for this demonstration, we are going to enable AuthPort at the cloud level. So just click on Buy Add-on. And here are the payment details. You can see that you'll be paying for four devices per month. And this is the total per month that you'll be charged for. Then you can choose the preferred payment method, whether it's manual pay or auto pay. Here are the terms and conditions. Please take a look at them and you can check the box to continue. Then confirm your purchase. And you can cancel this add on at any time. Just to show you how you can enable AuthPort just for particular sites. You can go to those sites and go to the add-ons page to enable AuthPort from there. Now let's go back to the cloud level because this is where you'll be configuring settings for AuthPort. So once AuthPort has been enabled, you can see this option appear under Manage on the cloud menu. So click on it and you'll see that there's a submenu We'll take a look at each of the options here. So this brings us to the second step in setting up AuthPort, which is to create service plans and generate accounts that are linked to these service plans. So let's go to service plans first. You can see that two service plans have already been added. We're going to add a new one and we're going to call it demo. Here you can select either to stick with um, a basic time length or a custom time period. You can explore the options here. We will not go into the details, but you can find them in the technical document. So we'll stick with basic time length and we can change the days to 15. So this account will be valid for 15 days. And we would like to put a cap on how much data this account can consume and we'll leave it at one gigabyte. And we'll have the options to renew the quota periodically. So daily, weekly, or monthly. And we can also put a restriction on how many devices can be sharing the same account simultaneously. And we will set it to three. So this means that only three users will be able to share this account and click Confirm. So you can see that the service plan has been added. 
Now, the next thing is to add accounts that are linked to the service plan. So we can give these accounts to our Wi-Fi users. Here you have two options. You can add one account by clicking here, or you can add a bunch of accounts at the same time by clicking here. So that's what we're going to do. So here, select the plan. So it's already been selected demo and scroll down. We would like to create 10 accounts at the same time. And by default, these accounts will be exported to a file. But we'll skip that for now and click Confirm. So you can see that 10 accounts have been created. And they all are linked to the demo plan that we have just set up. And you can see how much data they've consumed, if it's expired, and their session status. Then you can edit or delete the accounts from here. Now we're done with service plans and accounts. Let's move on to the next option, which is certificate. We strongly recommend using a valid SSL certificate here. If you just use the default one or if you're using a suspicious SSL certificate, your users might see a security warning upon Captive Portal detection on their devices. Then the next option is Captive Portal. This is where you can create customized Captive Portals with the Captive Portal editor that's included in Offport. And you can save multiple Captive Portals here for different SSIDs. Now let's try to add a new Captive Portal. And this pop-up window is the Captive Portal editor. So you can choose to start with any of the themes, but basically the only difference is the background, which you'll be able to change later. So let's just click on one of the starting themes, the coffee shop one. In this Captive Portal editor, there are drag and drop components that can be easily added to the splash page for example, you can add text, links, images, or videos. Then you can also view the code from here. So this is a very convenient tool that would allow users who may not be an expert in web development to easily customize their own splash page. So just feel free to explore the options here and play around with them. Since this editor was designed to be user-friendly and intuitive, you should be able to set up your own login page in no time. So this is the Captive Portal Editor. Now the last option is Event Log. Here you can see historical events such as account creation, user logins, user logouts, service plan updates, and so on. So you can see that uh, we've create accounts. We have create plans or remove plans and so on. Okay, so now we're almost done with the setup. We're just left with one part and that's the last step in setting up Authport. So remember Authport is for wireless clients to authenticate themselves. So we will have to enable it in Wi-Fi configuration specifically in SSID configuration. So let's go to a site. So go to configuration, Wi-Fi access. Let's set up a new SSID. And we'll scroll down to network settings. This is where you can enable outboard just for this SSID, because each SSID can have its independent Authport settings. So we'll enable it. And once you've enabled Authport, you'll see the option of Captive Portal. So you can either stick with the default Captive Portal or the other Captive Portals that you've added. And we will choose Hello here and confirm. 
So that's all for setting up Autport. Now let's do a recap on the three steps to set up Autport. The first step is to enable Autport in add-ons. Remember that Autport can be enabled for the entire cloud, and that can be done at the cloud level. Or you can enable Autport just for certain sites, and you can go to those sites to enable Autport. Then the second step is to add service plans and generate accounts that are linked to these service plans. And the final step is to enable Autport in SSID configuration at the site level. So each SSID can have its independent Autport setting. And once Autport has been enabled, you can choose the appropriate captive portal for that SSID. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at ecwifi at edge-core.com. We hope to see you again soon. Have a nice day.